episode of Born to Read. Uh, I am actually flying solo today. Uh, this is a book that I have read, but uh, Jeremiah hasn't read yet. And I will emphasize yet because uh, this is a book that I think uh, every Christian should read. It's The, the title is uh, Come and Welcome to Jesus Christ by John Bunyan, famed Puritan. Uh, more well known for his uh, Pilgrim's Progress, but I think if he hadn't written Pilgrim's Progress, this would probably be his definitive work. It's a very thorough uh, treatment of a uh, passage here in John chapter 6, uh, but uh, in true Puritan form, he does a good job of uh, leaving no stone unturned in this book. And I just want to read here the, the text. He kind of divides this book. This book only has six chapters in it, uh, and the, the first chapter um, is just kind of an explan- an overview, an explanation of the text. And he, he goes through most of the chapter uh, of John chapter 6 um, uh, of the words of Jesus. But I want to read some of these that were that, that he really focuses on uh, especially. So uh, I'm going to start here in John chapter 6. I think it'll be helpful to kind of frame the discussion today. Uh, I'm going to start in John chapter 6, verse 32. It says, Gen- Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up on the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up on the last day. And this is kind of the, the basic passage. Uh, so he starts the, the first chapter, kind of goes through just the basic uh, understanding of what it, what's going on here, what's, what's he doing, uh, some of the, the verses before and after, and, and this whole uh, discourse in John chapter 6, uh, and the importance of it. And so he kind of just talks about what does this mean? Uh, come and welcome to Jesus Christ. We're going we're gonna to frame some terms. But then he starts back with um, the the promise of the Father, where it says um, in verse 37 of John chapter 6, all the Father giveth me shall come to me. Um, and so he, um, his second chapter is titled uh, The Extent of the Gift. He takes the extent of the gift and he says, here's the Father says, I'm going to give you this people uh, to the Son. Uh, here, here, here you go. Um, uh, happy birthday. Uh, he, he gives it to the to the son to to do this, um, and so his his first attack at this, as he kind of covers the same ground, and and at the first part of this book, uh, reading through it, I almost felt like, my goodness, Bunyan, this is so repetitive. Do you really need to be uh, so repetitive? Not to mention uh, it's repetitive, but it's also um, following in this uh, King James Puritan style English. Um, and so it can it can be a little bit difficult. So pro tip for you, if you're reading this book, I found it very helpful to actually read it out loud. Uh, reading some of the, the King James Old English it is easier to do if you're reading it out loud. There's a, a certain flow to it, and it makes it much easier to find that rhythm, and it's, it's just uh, you, you comprehend it a little bit better. I'm more of an auditory learner anyway, so... Uh, you do you. You figure out what what works best for you. But I, I did find uh, reading the the old English out loud uh, helped. But the overall message of the book, in its repetition, uh, is very helpful. Uh, at first, I found it very tedious and like, my goodness, can't you? Let's get to the point already. But in repeating it, I think he really drives drives home the message that he's trying to to get across. And by in repetition, he doesn't just cover the same ground over and over. He he comes at it from every different angle, so that you really feel like there is no stone unturned when when you finish this book. You go, I think I really have a good, thorough understanding of what 
what it means, uh, really a, a simple explanation of the doctrine of salvation. What does it mean to be saved? When I come to Christ, when I say, yes, I believe in Jesus Christ who died on the cross for my sins, uh, what does that mean? What is the process that's happened up to that point in my life, in eternity from the decree of the Father, uh, all across the board? It's, it's a very helpful view of it, and I think it's good that he starts this book off uh, in the chapter the extent of the gift, he he lays out why why we have to start with the Father, the the Father viewing us as believers as a gift from the Father to the Son. That we are his we are his his prized possession. It's a gift from the Father, and he says, "Father is a familiar word; it frighteneth not the sinner, but rather inclineth his heart to love." It's and so even Jesus in his explanation of what it means to be saved, he makes it very clear. Father, Son, this relation of come to the Father, come find rest, come find security, come find peace and joy uh, in Jesus Christ is knowing that the Father is good, knowing that the Father gives good gifts. Um, And he says here, indeed, we perceive we the love of Christ or the love of God. Uh, Hiram gathered that God loved Israel because he had given them such a king as Solomon. But how much more may we behold the love that God hath bestowed upon us and that he hath given us to his son and also given his son for us. So it's a, he really helps clarify that there's a two-way street here, uh, that we, as the people of Christ, are God's gift to his son as well as Christ being the gift to us for our salvation. And I think that was a, a, an incredibly helpful um an incredibly helpful perspective that, that he goes into. Uh, the, the next chapter he went in and talked about uh, the son's reception of the gift, that God gave this gift, um, and what did the son do with it? And you read there in John chapter 6, um, this is where he goes, this is where the repetition kind of uh, came in, and this is where I kind of caught wind of it. I was like, okay, I see, I see what you're doing here, Bunyan. Um, I'm on to you. And so as as I read this, he's saying, the son has received us, but what if, what if I don't, uh, what what if I'm too dirty to come? What if I'm too bad of a sinner to come to Christ? Uh, will he still receive me? And he would always remind you, I will in no wise cast you out. Him who comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. And he, he just reminds it over and over and over again. Um, he that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. And so that repetition is just, you, you need to get that rattling around in your brain. Him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. There, there's a beautiful promise there. Um, Jesus receives those who come to him. He receives them as a good gift from the Father and as a precious gift, he doesn't want to give it up. He's not going to give it up easily. He's not going to give it up flippantly. Uh, he loves those who come to him because he views them as a gift to him from the Father. And so uh, we can find rest in coming to him. Uh, and Bunyan, I think, makes it abundantly clear and very helpful uh, to view this. And as a side note, Bunyan also uh, has a book called uh, Jerusalem Sinner Saved, and I think that would be a really helpful uh, side commentary to go along with this. And he uh, he emphasizes in the Great Commission uh, there in that book, he emphasizes the Great Commission that Jesus says, uh, go to uh, Jerusalem and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Uh, and his emphasis there is, the people of Jerusalem were the people who killed the Christ. Those were the worst sinners. So if if Christ says, start in Jerusalem, he says, I want to see the Jerusalem sinner saved, hence the title of, of that work. Um, he wants to see the Jerusalem sinner saved. And so if Jesus is willing to save the Jerusalem sinner, the worst kind of sinner is what Bunyan puts forth. Uh, if he's willing to save that sinner, then he's willing to save any who come to him in faith. And so this book then kind of would, would it, it pairs nicely together to go, okay, Jesus is saying, come to me. And if you come to me, him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out from the worst uh, to the, the most righteous, uh, despite our righteousness being as filthy rags. He's saying, come uh, to me and know that if you come, 
I will in no wise cast you out. You're welcome. You're welcome to Jesus Christ. And so uh, it, it's very helpful. Uh, so side plug, this is kind of uh, makes it kind of a two-in-one book. Uh, Come and Welcome to Jesus Christ and Jerusalem Center Saved, both by John Bunyan. Both uh, excellent, excellent um, material. But then when he when he continues on, I think that that was really the the bulk of the book um, was uh, coming coming to Christ, um, his reception of the gift, um, and our coming to him. His fourth chapter, uh, uh, when you get kind of that two thirds of the way through the book, when he he calls it the import of the words to me or the importance of those the word to me, uh, and why it's important that we have to come to Christ, but all the way all the way to him um, and in the way that he desires and that he prescribes. Bunyan says, all the other ways to God are dead and damnable. The destroying cherubim stand with flaming swords, turning every way, every way to keep all others from his presence. He says, Christ Jesus, by these words, further suggested that it is well, that he is well content with, his, with this gift of the Father to him. By saying, all that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. I will heartily, willingly, and with great content of mind receive him. Is what he's, he's saying Christ is coming. So then he says, speak out, man. Art thou such a one? And art thou now coming to Jesus Christ for the mercy of justification, that thou mightest be made white in his blood and be covered with his righteousness? Fear not, for as much as this thy coming be, betokeneth that thou art of the number of them that the Father hath given to Christ, for he will in no wise cast thee out. Come now, saith Christ, and let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be like wool. And when Christ speaketh, he hath a mouth as wide as heaven and earth. So in a word, he that is come to Christ, his groans, his tears, his doubts, and his fears are turned into songs and praises. And so this whole chapter is really a come come to Jesus Christ, come all the way to Christ, um, and come joyfully. Come come res, uh, expecting to receive the life that he promised to those who come to him. Um, and so then his final, uh, his final two chapters um, go into the, um, the, the types of of sinners that come to Christ. You have those that come to Christ out of brokenness, those that come to him uh, out of need. Um, and so those are, those are where he continues to answers, answer those questions of, okay, what, what if I'm too bad to come to Christ? He says, no, Jesus says, any of them that come to me, I will in no wise cast out. Um, and he says, the promises therefore are but to encourage the coming sinner to come to Christ and not to rest in them anywhere short of salvation by him. So he's saying, don't say, that, oh, I know that Christ will save those who come to him. So good on you. That faith in the promise it is not faith in Christ. And so he wants you to make sure <laughs> that you understand that uh, coming to Christ means coming all the way to Christ. Um, and so he, he does a, a helpful job. And then the final chapter is the drawing of the Father. What is the Father's role in this uh, coming to Christ and saying, um, by them, not excluding the Holy Ghost, is contrived and determined that the salvation of fallen mankind will be accomplished by God. That everyone that the Father hath given to Christ, according to the mind of God in the text, shall certainly come to Him. So, if you know, if you if you have those doubts, uh, am I really saved? Am I coming to Christ in true faith? Know that those who come to Christ come all the way to Christ by the gift of God the Father. To us in our salva- sal- us, our sal- uh, our saving faith, excuse me, um, but also in our um, in the promise that He has giving them to the Son. Um, it is not man, no, nor all the angels in heaven that can draw one sinner to Christ. He says, um, "Let then then let the saints here learn to ascribe their coming to Christ to the gift, the promise, and the drawing of the Father." So if you don't have a copy of this book, go pick one up. Uh, I highly encourage you to read this. This should go right towards the top of your list. It really helps uh, clarify and understand, give an assurance of your salvation that those who have come to Christ in faith uh, will be received by him uh, and that they will be in no wise cast out. Uh, This is a a 10 out of 10 book. Um, 
uh, terrific if you can get past the the King James English like I said earlier um, it's extremely beneficial I think it's a good mental exercise to, to read some of this uh, tougher writing anyways uh, so if you if you get through it uh, good on you extra points for, for reading it through maybe there's a, a more modern English version that you could pick up if you're uh, not so daring to to venture out into the the King James English Puritan world of, of writing uh, but nonetheless this is a terrific book to pick up read uh, and and find some security and some joy and, and assurance uh, in your salvation uh, in Jesus Christ so uh, I'll leave you with this final final quote I know I've already hit quite a bit of uh, quotes from this book but this one uh, maybe hits uh, well to, to finish with so he says coming sinner Christ inviteth thee to dine and sup with him. He inviteth thee to a banquet of wine, yea, to come into his wine cellar, and his banner over thee shall be love. So come and welcome to Jesus Christ.